Any? All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Uh, despite a, a small team, we are um, still uh, excited that you all are all here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Roland Bullard. Um, I serve here at Dillard as Vice President for Student Success. We've committed every Friday to having these programs, um, this virtual program, to provide opportunities for um, students to come on and to ask any questions they would have. If there's anything that has happened during the week that you'd like to have us to address, you can also send questions ahead of time if you see that there's an issue that you and several of your friends are, are having and you want somebody from the university to come on and address it, this is also a good forum for that to happen. And you simply have to uh, send those over. Uh, I think Dr. Courtney sent something out during the week um, to ask for suggestions or any of those kinds of things. So please do um, let us know what that looks like. And our goal, um, despite the fact that we're in COVID season, um, our goal is to ensure that people um, continue to have, I think even after all of this is over, um, we will continue to do some version of this because I think it's been helpful from the standpoint that it gives students a real opportunity to interact with faculty and staff and to really ask questions that they would have um, in real time and not have to sort of work through phone or email or any of those kinds of things. You know that on Fridays, you can always come here to ask the questions that you would have. And so. With that being said, um, certainly um, as I make these uh, few comments, please feel free to drop questions in the, um, in the chat and that way we can kind of answer them live. So the first update that I have is around um, the, the campus and sort of the state of affairs as it relates to campus and COVID infection and all of that kind of thing. On our COVID-19 um, uh, information page, which is there's a link to it, on the main um, campus site, and I'll be sure to drop it in the chat. So in case you haven't seen it, you'll be able to see it. There is something in there and it's called a dashboard. And the dashboard essentially tells you um, essentially what it is, um, what, what our numbers are here on campus. A lot of people have asked me about that. Um, and so we've been really clear that every Friday, and the same thing will happen today, um, every Friday, um, usually around 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon, we will get all of the latest numbers in terms of our infection rates on campus. Um, and I think what it tells is um, the total number that we've had, we start counting officially on August the 1st, the total number that we've had of infections on campus, the number of new cases for that week, the percentage of uh, the number of cases that um, we've had versus sort of the faculty and staff and the students total, and then anybody who is um, quarantined. So if we have people that are quarantined, then you will know that number as well. Um, and so we hope that you will um, review that information. And if you'll notice based on our current numbers, our numbers are pretty low right now. Um, and we're excited about that. It means that folks are practicing their social distancing and so on and so forth. If you will notice, the thing that has happened in society, so in a lot of the cities where they've reopened too quickly or they've um, sort of let their guard down, there's been a spike. Um, and so what we've got to do is we've got to encourage each other around this whole piece to say that despite the fact that our numbers are low right now, we're not going to let our guard down. We're not going to you know, stop wearing masks or stop socially distancing, washing our hands. We're, we're not going to do that. The, the reason why is because we can very easily, um, it just takes one person be infected and one person who passes that along for this thing to spread like wildfire on our campus. And very candidly, we will have to close. It's, there's no maybe possibility we will close if we end up with numbers that end up sort of rivaling what we can do. Because even though we can quarantine, the idea is, is if there's so many people that are in this space, we won't have the staff or the resources to sort of handle a campus of 50 or 100 people that will be quarantined or sick. So we'll just need to close. And so I really, really, really want to avoid that at all costs. And I think the way to do that is to continue to just sort of assume that everybody that you come into contact with has COVID-19. That's the way to do it. 
if I came to you right now and I said, hey, I got COVID-19, you and I were standing there talking, you would practice your social distancing, you'd make sure your masks are on, you would um, have a, probably a little shorter of a conversation with me. Um, it, practice that. That's what we've got to do during this time frame until we're able to, to get a vaccine or move in a different direction as all of this is related. So um, please give thought to that. I'm really proud of our numbers. Um, I put a statement out last night um, on behalf of the university um, because the news stations are contacting us and they're saying, hey, what are your numbers like on campus? And so the statement I put out last night essentially said to, that I was very proud of, and I, I, I loved on y'all a little bit in that statement where I said I was really proud of the maturity and the, 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 the type of diligence that our students have practiced in the way that we our infection rates are low. So y'all, don't look make me look crazy. Let's keep these infection rates down. Let's keep socially distancing um, because I really believe that we can make it to the end of the semester, which this year is much shorter because I think we are done basically that couple of days before Thanksgiving. And so we're doing that so that we are in, um, in a good space as it relates to I'm heading into that flu season. And in the spring, if I have to guess now, we will probably start a little bit later in the spring, um, just so that we're, we don't start in the middle of the flu season. So um, that's what, what, what is the state of affairs around um, COVID-19 and the, um, the uh, infection rates in the dashboard. I want to update you all on that. Anybody have questions about that? Have questions around that? Okay. All right, let's move to um, testing. Let's move to testing. So last week we had, um, last week we had the storms. The storms were pretty, um, pretty much dominated our week last week. Um, we thought they were coming here. They did not um, sort of affect us greatly here in the area, but it did affect, affect our ability to do the uh, testing on campus. And so what we, uh, what the, the, if you all remember, the military was out here and they have the tents and everything going. Um, so what has happened at this point is, is they've contacted us back and said, look, we want to make up those days. And so next week, um, starting actually on Monday, on the holiday, they actually will have um, some version of that out here in the, what I'll call the Cook parking lot, um, right near here, here near the Union. Um, we'll have the same similar setup um, here for folks to get tested. If you've been tested already, I would suggest that if you um, were tested, say, before we were, came back to school, so in those first week or two of August, I would suggest you go ahead and get another test. It's free. It keeps you up to date on your status. You've been here a couple of weeks. Um, I, say, I say do it. Um, that I think the way to, to to stay on top of this and to ensure that you're not passing along the virus is, is when there are opportunities to be tested, you should go ahead and get tested. And so from next week until the end of the semester at minimum, we will have some version of testing on campus for folks, okay? So if you feel ill, you feel sick, you feel anything, if you feel like you've been exposed, let us know and we will help you to get tested, okay? We will help you get tested. Next week, we'll have all the testing available, but then even after that, there will be, we've created some relationships with different uh, public health uh, partners, and they will come in and they will help us to get you all tested. So there's no reason why you should not be able to be tested here at Dillard University, at least through the end of this semester and um, at this point, it seems like we'll be able to do it in the spring as well. But hopefully by then we'll have some um, form of vaccine and this will all start to kind of cycle down, okay? So testing next week and then um, testing each week moving forward. And if you are, um, if you're in a situation where you've been, you feel like you've been exposed, please let us know so that we can help you get tested. I don't care what day or night or weekend it is. Just let us know so we can help you, all right? Um, any questions about testing? Questions about testing? All right, wonderful. 
the next piece that I wanted to um, sort of touch base with you all about was um, this weekend. So look, the I know uh, Labor Day weekend is a great weekend to kind of to enjoy it and to kick it hard and to really get out there and, and stretch your legs a little bit, um, especially after having been in, in classes for a few weeks. Um, but this is another one of those spaces where it was like kind of like Fourth of July weekend was um, a couple of week, couple of months ago, where it was a really um, ended up being a spike in um, a lot of the cases because people um, decided that they were going to um, have a good time um, and they were not going to mask, they were not going to socially distance, and this kind of thing. And so, I really want to encourage people to say, "All right." I'm gonna go have a good time this weekend or not, whichever one you decide to do, but I am going to do all of the things that it takes to ensure that I'm safe, that my um, team is safe, that my partner is safe, that my family is safe. Um, please be sure that you do that. That's the only way that this is all gonna work. If everybody goes home and everybody goes to their favorite Labor Day spot, um, contract the virus, um, and then um, uh, bring it back to campus, we're going to be in a tough spot. And so we really have got to make sure um, that we, uh, we got to make sure that we get, we get this all, get this all done and we practice um, everything that we need to practice to stay safe. Okay. Um, any questions about um, this weekend or anything that has to do with that? Okay. All right. Um, any questions in the chat? We do. We do have uh, one question, two questions. One is, should we only be getting tested if we have symptoms? The way that I think that folks should, and this is something that I think I probably will share um, even to the, the, the broader campus community, is that you should never in the, in the, in the, in the, the uh, in the current kind of state of affairs, you shouldn't, if you've gone a month and haven't been tested, I believe that's too long. Um, especially if we're gonna have the free testing on campus and we're gonna have spaces where you can get tested on campus. Uh, in, this, in this period, it's, it's too long to go uh, for a month, three weeks, four weeks without getting tested. Um, especially because I think by, probably by the end of September, if not sooner, um, we will start having the rapid test on campus. And so to me, once we get those, students should come in uh, as, um, uh, come in as often and as, 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 as regularly as they possibly can. I wouldn't say do it every three days or anything, but I certainly would say um, at least once um, every two, two to three weeks at minimum, we should, we should, we should do that. Um, somebody asked about the free testing. Like I said, that, that testing should start on Monday. On Monday, um, 8 to 6, you should be able to do it exactly like we had it before. Uh, I guess it will be now two weeks ago when we had the testing out here in the lot. And you were able to engage the folks um, to, to Jasmine's question. Um, um, there's another question. So what are the ramifications for students who didn't get the initial testing required to stay on campus? So what ended up happening was, is we ended up having to um, rethink our deadline. The, the initial thought was, is that we were going to remove students from housing. Um, the, when the storm came, we had to kind of back off that a little bit because we, we did not, we, we had a deadline of that same week. And so we had to back off because students did not have the ability, because they essentially shut down most of the uh, testing sites around the city. Um, so I think the conversation is um, we will kind of reset the bar. And so there are about, I can't remember the number, but there's a number of students who have at this point that have not turned in their testing results, but they have been tested. And so we want to get those results and we've been keeping track of the people who have not been tested. And so what we'll do is, is we are going to be planning to send them uh, message, messaging this week, um, I'm sorry, this weekend, um, to say, hey, you haven't been tested or we don't have your stuff on file. Next week when the free testing happens, 
the expectation is that you, you do that. Um, we're going to get a little more forceful moving forward now with the initial um, testing conversation. Um, will we kick people out of housing? I don't, I don't think we're gonna, I don't think that's where we are anymore. We're, we're past that. And part of the reason why is because what? If you lived, if you came to the, if you came to campus on anywhere between the 11th and the 15th, you've been here two weeks now. So to me, that's the equivalent of if you would have had the virus at this point and pass it on, we, you would have gotten the virus already. We would know that you had the virus at this point. So it's not, um, it's not that we are not taking this seriously, but we also know that there were um, um, circumstances that kept us from being able to enforce the campus-wide expectation that you were, um, you know, that you were expected to get tested. And so we will follow up with those students who did not get tested this first round, and then we will have them to get tested next week so that we can, in fact, um, sort of look at that, um, that baseline that we were wanting to create, okay? Thank you. Another question, um, and it may be too early to answer this, but given the progress that we're making, do we think seniors will be able to walk the Oaks? That's the goal. That's, that's the goal. Um, I'm not sure why I put this in my mouth. Um, the, <laughs> that's, that really is the goal. The goal is to, um, to, 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 to do this citywide. And I think part of the issue is, is that not only do we have to get better, the city has to get better. Because one of the reason why we weren't able to do it in the spring was because the city had a ban on large scale events. So that's why we weren't able to, to do it. So to me, we've got to encourage this. I know there's a number of students that are um, connected to a task force that's for all of the universities across New Orleans. And so what you're going to see from them over the next couple of weeks is a campaign around, hey, we need everybody to mask. We need everybody to wash hands. We need everybody to do this. And you're absolutely right. One of those goals is to ensure that seniors can walk across the Oaks. And in order to do that, New Orleans has got to get better. And so we've got to encourage people that we know in the city, and we've got to get on our social media posts, all of those kinds of things to encourage people in New Orleans to say, hey, we've got things we really want to do. Please make sure you're doing it. So when you see people out there <coughs> partying, all this kind of thing, and doing all those, those pieces. A lot of our students are students that would possibly go to those events. Um, a lot of your friends at different schools are people that would go to those kinds of events. We've got to encourage people. If you're absolutely going to go and involve yourself in those things, you've got to mask, you've got to distance, you've got to do all of these things, um, or otherwise we're going to be doing another virtual ceremony in, in May. And so it's on all of us to push each of us to push ourselves to get this done. But the goal right now is to have this done for, for May so you guys can walk across the Oaks. Okay, um, another question just popped up and it's to both of us. So do mm -hmm. either of you plan to participate in the vaccine trial? Um, I do not plan on participating. I'm definitely keeping up with the literature about it, reading about it, learning about it, but uh, I am choosing not to participate. And I actually just went to the doctor today and they didn't ask me about it. So I'm guessing I may also not fit the kind of characteristics uh, for like a testing subject. So if you're going to the doctor right now and you kind of fit the bill, they will actually ask you about it. So there were some other folks when I was there and they were asked about it. So um, I'm not gonna be participating. Good question though. I like the dialogue. You know, I, I actually, I, I, I want to do it. Um, I've actually talked to my wife about it. She's not particularly excited about me doing it, but um, I told her that I would do like Dr. Courtney and get all the research, bring it home and just try to read it for myself. Um, I saw the, the, the letter that Dr. Kimbrough and Dr. Verrett put out yesterday. Um, and I thought that that was, a, it was pretty compelling um, that the two of them as college presidents um, were engaged in it, but they're also, they're also pretty healthy guys. And so I think one of the things you've got to balance in a lot of this is sort of 
like Dr. Courtney said, is what is your personal profile and whether or not you have the ability um, to, uh, to participate based on your personal health profile. Um, and if you can, I would encourage you to, um, because they do need, um, I don't know if the person that asked the question is African American, but they do, you, they do need more people of color involved in the, um, in the trials. And so if you have the ability and once you do your research, if it's something that you that you can do, I would encourage you to do it. But I think everybody's got to make a decision for themselves based on your own personal health profile. Okay, um, any other questions out there? We'll give y'all a second to put them in the chat box or the Q&A box if you have them. Um, a few reminders uh, for students, the virtual student org fair is happening on Monday from 11 to one. You can RSVP on Blue Connect, you'll log in, you go in, you see the organizations that are represented, click on it, and then it will take you actually to a Zoom or Google Hangout where you will meet members of the organization. So it's something pretty new and fun. We're looking forward to that. Um, so definitely check that out, whether you are a first year student, a new student, um, or if you're a returner and you just want to learn more about organizations on campus, feel free to do that. Um, tonight, we're going to be showing a screening of Black Panther on the lawn. So we got some lawn chairs, got some blankets, some snacks, all that good stuff. So y'all feel free to come out and enjoy that this evening. Uh, on next Tuesday, we're going to be showing a Stacey Abrams documentary. And it's about voting and civic engagement and um, all the things around that. If you have not registered to vote, make sure you register to vote. Very important. Um, we've sent out some information about that and we'll continue to share that with you all. And then we have some other great things uh, coming up. So just keep a lookout to your emails and social media. And as always, um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions, if you need a mask or anything like that. Um, let us know, we have masks and things too. Blue Troop will be out next week. Um, they'll be handing out masks, they'll be taking temperatures, so uh, be on the lookout for them. We won't tell you when or where, but they'll pop up and sometimes they'll have prizes too. Um, I think Dr. Fuller said they may have <laughs> shirts um, at some point, so um, you just got to wait and see. The time for the movie also, don't think, okay, uh, the time for the movie tonight, I want to say is nine o'clock double check uh, Twitter uh, at Blue Devils Lit for the exact time. To get an absentee ballot, um, it depends on what state you're in. So uh, what you can do is go to the Secretary of State's office to their website, or if you just log into Blue Connect, go into the right corner when you click on your face, scroll all the way down to where it says ready to vote, and you'll see a resource called Turbo Vote and on TurboVote, um, it has the information for every state. It talks about how to register online, how to do absentee ballots, how to register by mail, and all the information. And it is updated in real time. So as your state upstate updates the policies, they will be reflected on the website as well. Um, so if you've got any other questions, just connect with me about that. Where do we get Dillard face mask? You get Dillard face mask, um, the ones that came in the COVID box. Thought I had mine up here. Those were given out by uh, the Office of Auxiliary Services. Um, so inside of the box was hand sanitizer, mask, um, wet wipes, and um, something else. Um, so you can pick those up from Auxiliary Services. It's in the bottom of Kearney, room 109. Dr. Buller has his box right there with his Dillard mask in there. So yeah, check that out. Uh, we will more than likely get some other Dillard masks. So just kind of be on the lookout as he uh, models the products from the bottom. Oh, I have these too. If somebody wants one, just let me know, I'll get you one. Yeah, Blue Troop may be uh, passing out some of those as well. So um, just kind of be on the lookout for that. And then if you like forgot your mask or something at home, definitely let us know. Don't walk around without a mask. So. If you need one immediately, don't uh, hesitate to ask. Yes, um, all of the Dillard community is welcome to uh, attend uh, the event. So feel free to join us for Black Panther tonight, Wakanda forever. Okay, if we already got a COVID box, can we get another? No, um, 
they only ordered one per community member. So um, we don't have enough for like everybody to get like a second round of boxes. Um, they do sell uh, masks in the bookstore. Like Dr. Bullitt just showed y'all, we're gonna be handing out some Diller branded masks. Uh, Blue Troop will be giving out some masks and then we're gonna be ordering some more, but um, we won't be offering uh, double COVID boxes. But good question, that was a good try though. I ain't mad at you. All right, any other questions? Okay, and the folks in business and finance would like y'all to know they have masks as well. If you stop by there and they um, even uh, sell them. So stop by there and ask them about those if you're interested, um, if you could get your mask at home, feel free. Um, that being said, we don't have any other questions. We appreciate you all coming out today. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, join us at any of the events. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us and we look forward to speaking with you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.